All right, Jesse on fire. Welcome back to the channel. Let's not bury the lead. I'm going to tell you guys right now, I got a lot of things to talk about, but right off the bat, I'll tell you what they are. We'll talk about Daniel Cormier, because him and Masvidal kind of went back and forth a little bit. We'll talk about John Jones vacating the light heavyweight belt, because we're doing this, because this is happening. This is actually happening. We're, we're, we're vacating the belt. This is, we're, this is what we're doing, okay? Dominic Reyes and Tiago Santos are going to fight for the vacated belt. This is happening, okay? So that's happening. We got Mickey Gall commenting on Mike Perry having his girlfriend in his corner. Can't remember anyone ever doing that. You know, kind of makes you wonder. It's like, geez, like, I feel like he was kind of on a roll and then he started losing a lot. Like, could it have something to do with his approach? Like, if this guy thinks that that's a good idea, maybe, maybe there's a gap in his strategy around preparation, upkeep, and his team if he thinks that's a fucking good idea, especially since his girlfriend is now his new girlfriend. Everyone agreed that his old girlfriend was the problem, so he clips her, he has a new girlfriend, and 15 minutes later, she's gonna be his corner girl now. What are we doing here? Um, there was something else that I forgot about, but we'll come back to that. So let's start with DC, all right? So right off the bat, here's what I wanna say. If DC beats Stipe, I want him to fight John Jones. And I obviously have said this on this channel before, but for those of you who are newer to the channel, I don't think I've ever talked about it since Mix Molly put all you guys with me. So there's gotta be a couple thousand of you guys that have come over and not heard me talk about DC and, and what I believe around his narrative for his career, because this is what I'm going to say about this. If DC beats John Jones, if they fight for a third time and he wins, it will be the greatest story in the history of the sport and no one will ever top it. In my opinion, I do not believe that there is a story, even a fucking hypothetical story with a current fighter of where they are, something that could happen in the best case scenario that could even come in the stratosphere of where it would land if fucking DC fought John Jones in the third fight and won and then retired. Okay, I, it's, it's hard to even put into words what that would mean. And, and, I, and here's the thing, people won't understand. I could try to explain it to you now, and I will right now. When the fight is coming up and people are seeing the footage of their former fights and all of the buildup, the things that just live in my noggin that you, oh, by the way, this is not a real tattoo. <laughs> my daughters put this on me, okay? I really, even though I realize, you know, you guys know the story about me fucking lighting that deer up that was killing my dog. This is not real. But I'm looking at it, I'm like, maybe I should get it because I hate this tattoo so much that maybe I should, anyway, it's nothing here, neither. But, uh, but yeah, they'll show all of the old footage of John Jones, DC, fighting in the press conference, all the shit, them talking shit back and forth, DC losing the first time, all the interviews that John had, DC getting knocked out the second time, all the stuff about the juice, all of that. DC crying after the second fight, okay? Let me actually touch on that real quick. Let me touch on that. So at the time of that fight, I was in a very, very precarious situation, okay? I had, well, you know what? For another day, but let's just say this. I had lost a lot that year, okay? I had lost a lot that year. And not due to anything I did, just due to being a person who was putting it all on the line in business, okay? And I had put it all on the line, I had lost. So when DC lost that fight, and then he was in the octagon and you could just see the utter emotional destruction that was attached to that for him. You know, when they put the microphone in his face and he looks up and he sees himself get knocked out and you see the air get sucked out of his soul, right? That hit home for me, okay? That hit home because I related to that very much so, where it was like, he had put, there's nothing he wanted more. He had put everything he possibly could into training for that fight. He believed he was going to win. He visualized him winning. He had done everything right. He was winning in the fight, or at least certainly in the fight. And to get knocked out like that, to lose, and to lose so decisively, I knew what that felt like. Okay, that is exactly how I felt in that moment. And the next day, this guy posted this thing on Facebook. And he was like, he posted a, a, like a meme, you know, one of those memes of DC crying. And he was like, hey, Jesse, 
what do you think of this? You think it's you think it's pussy for a guy to cry after a fight, or you think it was blah blah blah? Okay, he asked me that question at the wrong time. I lost it. Like, and and I it was intentional not to go directly at him, but I posted this video on YouTube, which I have subsequently deleted. That was uh, serious. <laughs> was serious. Okay, I lost my mind. Right, and I said. Anyone who's ever posted one of those fucking memes doesn't know shit about putting it on the line. And I would guarantee you that every one of these motherfuckers has some peasley fucking job that they drive their fucking, their coffin to work every day for. And their, their goals at work are to squeak by and they've never put it on the line, never tried for anything. They've never even dared to dream for something bigger because only a person who's dead inside would think that that fucking meme is funny after what DC went through losing that motherfucking fight. And I will stand by that to this day. Anyone who fucking shared that meme, fuck you. Still, fuck you. I don't care. I... I don't care. Fuck you. Still. But, uh, yeah, I felt a lot more passionate about it then, <laughs> believe it or not. And when DC talks about John Jones, you can see that is the fight he wants. Whether he'll admit it or not, whether anyone else will admit it or not, that's the fucking fight. Okay? That is the fight. Fuck this Stipe fight. Now, I, I won't say that, actually. I just really want DC to win this fight. I want D Dude, You can't tell. I'm trying to get serious. I'm trying to get fucking serious right now. You're just going to... What are you trying to... You want to go down my shirt? How about I put you down my pants? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Anyway. So... <laughs> where was I? Uh, I like Stipe. I can tell he and I probably wouldn't get along very well. He'd probably be like, this guy's a loud mouth. Talks a lot. A lot, of, a lot of talk from Jesse on fire, you know, a lot of talk. I could just tell. He'd be like, that guy's a talker, which is true. Maybe the goat of talking, you know, maybe the goat. And, you know, anybody who gets bent out of shape that I say that, by the way, people in the comments are like, you, you know, stop commending yourself. Blah, 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 blah. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. It's a shtick. Okay. Again, do you think that I go around my regular life going, Hey, I'm the fucking goat on the mic. Hey, Gabrielle, my wife. Look at how huge my dick is. I do that, actually. I 100% do that to Gabrielle. But, you know, I don't go to, like, strangers and talk about it. Or any other thing, you know? Hey, <laughs> have you guys seen me arm wrestle? Hey, how much can you bench? Okay? I have to tell everybody I'm the goat on the mic because then people will assess me that way. Is he really? Like, is he really that fucking good? And then they'll look and they'll go, fuck, he is that good. Because no one could say that about themselves and then pull it off if they weren't, right? It takes fucking brass balls to say, best of all time on the microphone. Some pretty good people on the fucking microphone, right? Pepsi challenge. Pepsi challenge all of them. Put them up, line them up, I'll knock them fucking down. Crush their dreams. Although, most of the people who have already established, you know, high-level mic status are making lots of dough and people know their names. So, I'm kind of like the up-and-comer. It's going to take me a little while. Not that long. It's a matter of discovery, you know, just give me the exposure and put them up, line them up so I can knock them down. For the record, all of my subscribers, I fucking love you guys, okay? So me calling myself the GOAT, you guys should be like, fuck yeah, he is the GOAT because I'm taking you guys with me, all of you guys. You guys should be my entourage. Well, really, you guys should just be like, I knew about this fucking guy when he was, you know, green screening in his motherfucking office. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. And he loves me. And it's true. I do. Why am I talking this long about this? Okay, so DC. I love this sport for the narratives, just like Mixed Molly Whoppery. Why do you think he and I get along so well? Okay, I talk to that fucking guy five times a week. And it's because we have found the common passion, like the narratives, right? We talk about all kinds of shit that's not MMA now, but like the narratives in this fucking, the, the, the story, the human stories. Tell me a story that's better than DC winning against Stipe challenging John Jones in his retirement fight and fucking winning. Tell me. And DC has knockout power at fucking heavyweight, dude. Knockout power with this fake stupid tattoo. Okay? Knockout power. 
So those shots that he's landing at fucking light heavyweight that John Jones is kind of eating, you know? And... Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Those shots that DC is landing and John Jones is kind of eating, maybe not so much at heavyweight. Okay, maybe not so much at fucking heavyweight. DC's got heat at heavyweight. He fucking folded Stipe like a lawn chair at heavyweight, right? Please, let me see that fight. DC, if you see that, please, please let me see that fight, please. If not for yourself, <laughs> for me, <laughs> because, you know, I need this. But I will have your back. You have no idea. If that fucking fight gets announced, I will not talk about anything else for like two months leading up to that fucking fight. I'll talk about it every single day. That I promise you. All right, so let's talk about this other shit. So uh, speaking of fucking John Jones, he's going to vacate the belt. We're doing this. We're doing this. He's going to vacate the belt. John Jones is going to vacate the fucking belt. He's going to vacate. Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah, Dominic Reyes, you and fucking Tiago Santos fight and blah, blah, blah. I mean, whatever. I don't hate that because then when John Jones comes back, he'll have to fight the best guy. I mean, you know, plain and simple. I mean, both those guys gave him a real serious run, especially. I mean, everybody's talking about Dominic Reyes, especially Tiago Santos, given that he folded his fucking knee a thousand different ways in like the second round. Dude, can you imagine how close that fight would have been or how, how much trouble John would have been in if Tiago could throw full throttle fucking kicks that whole time? Dude, that guy throws kicks that, that, that look like they weigh 5,000 pounds. So, and I love that fight. Dominic Reyes and Tiago Santos, that's a fucking real deal fight, man. I, like, in all honesty, 205, you pull John Jones out of there, it's kind of like Cejudo at 135. There's a lot of fucking talent there. There's a lot of talent at 205 now. Uh, you know, DC's never going to 205 again. I, dude, he said to Ariel, he weighs like 256 now. He's never going light heavyweight again. But, uh, but yeah, so I mean, that's, I don't, I don't know what the fuck John Jones is doing there, but it is what it is. Now let's talk about the funniest thing ever, okay? Let's talk about Mike Perry with his girlfriend working his corner. Mickey Gall says, I don't think Mike Perry's that bright. It's like, oh, oh, you think? Is that, wow. Well, I guess I should bet on Mickey Gall because I didn't realize his fight IQ was so high. You know, if he could recognize that Mike Perry's not that bright, then fuck, man. He, he must have an IQ of like 170, which beats mine by about 41. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> That's actually a true story. <laughs> no big deal. Although I took that IQ test in 2005, so Jesus, who knows? I, my IQ's probably gone down 20 fucking points since then. But anywho, uh, yeah, I mean, Mike Perry, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Are we seriously, like, are we at a place where we, you think you can get along on, on practice and talent? Like, how about, how about game planning, solid team? I mean, I, like, do, do I really actually need to go through this? Why it's, why no one else has ever put their fucking girl in the corner and what have i said on this channel about new relationships affect on single athlete i'm sorry single sport single athlete sports what on the athlete where they are alone in their sport that was really challenging see what i say fucking iq has certainly gone down but anytime a guy gets a new girlfriend bet on the other guy in their most in their their upcoming fight okay you can't have something that's that big in your life and simultaneously focus the way you do on, on being championship level, okay? And I think it partially has to do with like the, the, the singular focus, but also the like, like you're sharp. You know, if you're, if you're fucking getting ready for a fight, you know, you're happy, but you're sharp, right? You're happy, but you're sharp. Being in love, a new relationship, you are a fucking marshmallow, okay? A fucking marshmallow. Speaking of that, my brother is going to be on this show tomorrow. My twin brother. Bet you guys didn't know about that, did you? You know? Jesse on fire must be one of a kind. <laughs> How about not one of a kind? How about identical twin? Although he's obviously the less good looking identical twin of two of us. But, uh... He watches this sport as well. So he'll be here tomorrow. And he has already agreed to sit next to me. And we'll chat. He and I. Together. Wrap it out. So there will be that. And you guys can look forward to that. Now, the reason why I brought that up relating to uh, relationships is he has a history in counseling people like that. Now, he's not a... Uh, it's a long story, actually. Okay? Let's just... <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. He... Uh, 
He's not a marriage counselor. Let's just put it like that. But he is very sharp when it comes to relationships. He was the very first one that pointed that out to me. And then it kind of explained it to me. And I was like, fuck, that's true. And I started paying attention. Guys never win. Never win. Rory McIlroy, when he was engaged to that tennis bitch, tennis girl. And then as soon as like his game fell off a fucking cliff, the second that he broke that engagement off, inside of two months, he was the number one golfer in the world again. Literally, it was like, 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 one plus one equals two. Oh, new, new fiance. <laughs> new fiance. She. <laughs> Got rid of the fiance. <laughs> so we'll talk to him about that because he's an interesting gentleman. He has a very similar personality to mine. He's just kind of a pussy compared to me, you know. He might he might argue with that. He might argue with that. But, you know. Every time that we've actually gotten in the octagon and tried to work our problems out, you can ask him who's won that. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a mental edge or maybe I've just trained a little bit more than him. But he's better on the ground than me. But I knocked him out many, many... I haven't knocked him out many times. That's not true. <laughs> He's going to be here tomorrow, so I can't just make up lies about him. I can't just make up outright lies that he's going to be able to debunk, or at least won't admit. But I have knocked him out before. He's never knocked me out, so there's that. Anyway, that's what I got. I love you guys. DC, I love you. I want you to win that fight more than anything in the world. There's no one I will root for more passionately than I will root for you when you fight John Jones after you beat Stipe. Let's go. Everybody, subscribe to the channel. Like everything. Love you guys. Peace.